Craft sure are versatile. You can drive them on land or on the water. Of course, I wouldn't recommend doing so on a crowded beach or off a cliff. But that's not a concern. Today, I'm at a purpose-built hovercross track. And I'm not just going to get to ride it, I'm going to be driving as well. I uh, hope they have insurance. I tell you, I've done a lot of wacky things on this show, but driving a hovercraft is a first for me. But I'm not surprised. This is the only place in Australia that you can do it. So why do I need to forget everything I need to know about driving? Because driving hovercraft is unlike anything you've ever driven before. The, uh, the, the craft isn't in contact with the ground, so you've got no wheels, so you've got no friction. So it's only the change of direction of air that's helping you move around and, and steer the hovercraft. Is it easy to learn? It's easy to learn, it's easy to drive, but it's difficult to master. Not sure if I'm going to get the hang of this, but I am trying my best. So far, so good. Trying to learn the controls of the hovercraft is kind of difficult because you have to think in a completely different manner. By turning the steering wheel one way, it doesn't necessarily mean that's exactly where you're going. It's dependent on the wind and, of course, gravity. So what do you reckon, Russ? Am I ready to hit the track? I think so. You did very well. OK, did I do anything good or bad? Uh, you've basically nailed it. Uh, you've got to learn to move around more. Don't stay sitting on the seat. Be prepared to get onto your knees and move around. Uh, more throttle. Drive fast. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. record for the track here is 49.1 seconds held by a gentleman called the stag but for a beginner they say the average is about 60 seconds well i say get ready to rewrite the record books because it's going to take me a lot longer than that Wow, I gotta tell you, this is a bizarre experience. Driving from the land into the water, I expect to feel this, this big impact, but instead, it's the complete opposite. It just glides straight over both. I'm finding this sharp turn really hard to get, but I'm not quitting yet. He's driving really well, and he's getting most of the corners right. The only one is our tricky corner out on the water is the one where uh, Adam's struggling just to get the craft turned, but a um, bit more practice and we think he'll be there. You know, not only are these things fun, they're environmentally friendly as well. They glide over the surface with next to no friction, they produce a very small wake and they don't release pollutants into the water. That definitely gives them a green tick. OK, you've seen the speedster on the track. Now it's time to find out what the track time was. Now, up the top here, we have the stag. OK, 49.1 seconds. Very good. Now, who's this right down the bottom here? Oh, now, Dave managed to get lost halfway around his lap and it took him six and a half minutes to find his way around. <laughs> OK, so hopefully I did a lot better than Dave. So uh, I'm guessing, you know, I'm probably not going to be down there, but maybe in between Johnny and Clayton? In this conveniently located gap. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, you're going to be disappointed. But you still did a very good time. OK. We say anything under one minute is a good time, and you managed it in 58.4 seconds. 58.4. That's, uh, that's above average, isn't it? It is above average. You're happy with that? I'm very happy with that. Thank you very much for the time on Hovercraft today. It's always a pleasure. Average. I'm happy with that.